Thank you for viewing this Dan Foss Drives technical support video. This video will discuss a motor that will not run in bypass or drive mode on a bypass panel with a VLT drive. Please take a moment now to pause the video to read the safety warnings shown here. Failure to follow these warnings could result in death or serious injury. Hi, my name is Rodolfo Chazen and I'm part of a technical support team here at Danfoss Drives North America. Today we're going to talk about one of the most common issues we get in our department and how to troubleshoot it. My motor will not run in bypass or drive mode. Before we start, it's important to note one key difference that will make these troubleshooting steps a lot easier to understand. The control scheme for a bypass panel is slightly different from that of a VFD. In a standalone drive, standard I.O. would normally go straight from the source, meaning your PLC, building management system, etc., to the drive itself, as represented here by a switch box. Communication would happen between the two. On a modern bypass panel, on the other hand, communication would happen between your source, represented here by the switch box on top of a panel, and what we commonly refer to as a bypass board shown here slightly to the right of the pilot light. The reason for this is simple. We must be able to control and interlock the two systems within the panel, drive and bypass, with a common set of commands. To accomplish this, we use the bypass board as a middleman of sorts. What these translates into is that in most common installations, your control wiring will be landed on the bypass board, not the VFD. Now, this is not to say the drive itself will not have wiring. You will notice a bundle of factory installed blue wires on its control terminals. These don't need to be modified and shouldn't be modified, as in its original design is what allows the drive to communicate with the bypass board. Based on this main idea, troubleshooting this issue becomes a simple matter of checking a few key connections within the panel. The first of these being the switch in the front of a panel. Make sure that it's not set to off and that it has been set to operate in either drive or bypass, allowing it to engage the contactors within the panel, which in turn power up the drive or close the bypass contactor. It's important not to confuse this switch with the mains disconnect, which should also be checked at this stage. If you're still unable to run, there's a good chance you're missing one of the three main signals the panel requires. Run command, run permissive, and external interlock. A quick way to make this determination is by reading the status message at the very bottom line of your display. An alarm 60, or in some instances, auto remote coast, means you're missing the external interlock signal. Auto remote standby means you're missing the run command. And auto remote run request means you're missing the run permissive signal. All three of these signals are required for the panel to run in both drive and bypass. The physical location for all three of these connections is a terminal block labeled X55, sometimes MK100, at the bypass board. Notice how the terminal block itself is labeled X55, as should be the socket on the board. Always double check. Terminals 1 and 2 are run permissive. 3 and 4 are RON command, and 5 and 6 are external interlock. These require just a standard set of dry contacts, and if they're found empty, and or without any jumpers in them, that's probably the reason why the system won't run. If on the other hand they're found with field wiring in them, one must consider the possibility that those controls are not working as intended. One quick and efficient way to test this idea is by replacing all three of those dry contacts with jumpers, which would eliminate the uncertainty. Do keep in mind that by doing this you will be effectively overriding any safeties that may be in place. Make sure you consult with your site team before doing this. If at this point you're still unable to run your system, it might be time to check the overload. When tripped, it will behave the same as an external interlock, displaying an alarm 60 on the drive and preventing the bypass from engaging. Confirm that the reset button is in its correct position and that the dial has been set according to your motor needs. 
Most issues are usually taken care of by following these simple steps and taking into account the connections we've mentioned throughout this video. But when in doubt, you can always give us a call. Thank you for viewing. We hope this information has been helpful. Dan Foss Drives can provide additional technical support, parts information, or repair services options by contacting us through one of the following methods. For immediate access to customer service or a technical support expert in North America, call 1-888-DANFOSS or 1-888-326-3677 or contact us through email. For technical support, the email address is drives.ts.na at danfoss.com. For customer service, the email address is drives.cs.na at danfoss.com. For after-sales service, the email address is drives.ts.service.na at danfoss.com. Additional information is also available on our website at www.danfossdrives.com. For contact information in areas outside of North America, please visit our global website at www.danfoss.com. Thanks again.